welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, our first reading is from Matthew chapter 28. You will definitely probably recognize this. You will probably hopefully recognize the, the second reading that we have today as well as um, the second reading is what most Jews consider the most important um, scripture reading in the Bible. And so I think you'll, you'll recognize that. And I think you'll recognize this as well. So from Matthew chapter 28, we're starting with verse 18. Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And this word, our second reading, is from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Like I said, this is um, considered one of the most important scripture lessons, scripture readings for, for Jews. They have a special name for it, Shema Israel. And Shema means here. And here, O Israel, is the first part of this reading. And that's why they call this the Shema. And they actually take this scripture reading and fold it up, roll it up into, into a little tiny itty bitty thing and put it over their hearts. They also put it over their doorposts and um, very devout Jews will always have this over their hearts, on their foreheads and over the doorposts because you will find that commanded in the scripture. So listen to the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away when you lie down and when you rise, bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob to give you, a land with fine large cities, that you did not build with houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill hewn cisterns that you did not hew vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God shall you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is this is an amazing way for us to start our journey this Lent and to start our journey that we're going to be taking this land through the Lord's prayer. One of our goals is to become a people of prayer. And so this spring, um, Melanie and I and the council have um, sort of come up with, with some ways for us to be people of prayer. And one of them is to study um, our, our most fundamental prayer prayer as Christians, and that is the Lord's Prayer. And so this spring, we join the Sunday school kids who are learning more about the Lord's Prayer as we go through this Lenten journey. And we are going to be breaking things down and learning more and more about these words that, that are so precious to us that, that God has, has given us through Christ as, uh, as we begin 
and we think about that first phrase in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's where we're going to start. God is in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven. Now, God is also always with us. I want you to to imagine it's a hard thing to to understand and I know our kids have really been struggling with this that God is not just bound to one geographic location like like we are so sometimes we can get the impression that that God breaks up into little pieces and is in one place here and in one place there when in reality God is in everything always and so when we say that god is in heaven we also acknowledge that god is in us and what that means is that heaven is always with us we are not citizens of this earth we are citizens of heaven heaven is our home whether we know what it looks like or remember being there or whether we are um, sort of just curiously wondering. I, I love the song that, um, that many of you know very well that, that tells us um, or that wonders the question, well, what's it going to be like when we're in heaven? Will we be dancing? Will we be singing? What, what is this actually going to be? This is our home. What does home really look like to us? And we sometimes think of this as sort of something over here. It's a different geographic location. We, we look at home as a place. And that is very human and it, it restricts God a little bit to imagine that, that God who is in heaven can't also be with us. We forget that because God is with us and God is in heaven, heaven is with us. And this can be the kingdom right here. So acknowledging God's presence in heaven is acknowledging that we too belong in heaven and that heaven can indeed be with us right now as God is with us. And that God has power over not just heaven, but this place as well. So God exists both in heaven and with us, not two gods, but one God. And we read this in Deuteronomy, right? Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord your God is one. There aren't many gods. There are not multiple spirits out there that um, together constitute God. The Trinity is not separate. But instead, there is one God. And despite our lack of understanding, our one God is able to be in many places and many times simultaneously. And that's, that's something we need. Like we wouldn't be able to succeed in our lives without that. And so the very first thing we pray in the Lord's Prayer is, our Father who art in heaven. We acknowledge that about our God. First thing, hallowed be thy name. Your name is holy. Of course, back in biblical times, names meant more than just a thing you called someone. It was your identity. And when people's identity changed, they changed their name because that's not who they are anymore. They're, they have a different identity. And so when we say that God's name is holy, what we are saying is God is holy. The essence of God is holiness. 
There is no holy apart from God. There is no God apart from holy. It is who God is. And God is king, sovereign. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are the ultimate in holiness. And there is none like you. What a beautiful way to start. What a beautiful picture to paint of God. Acknowledging first and foremost that God is closely related to us like a father and a child. That God is holy. And that God is here and reigns here. Not just in heaven. And that our life can be more heavenly because God is in it. It can be more holy because God is in it. It can be more special because God is our father. Now, a biblical father is a little different than fathers nowadays. So they were, um, they were where the buck stopped. And they were also responsible for everyone in their care. There, there were um, different relationships that someone who was called father would have with children. It's not the same as now. Now we, we sort of adore our children so much that, that we almost worship them sometimes. But that's not how it was biblically. Biblically, especially in the in the earlier days of, of the Bible, in the times that Jesus would be familiar with, father is who you would call the head of the household. Now, there were more people in the household than just that person's children. There were spouses, and yes, at that time there were multiple spouses. Um, there were people who were a part of the household who accepted the leader of the household as father, even though they weren't related. For example, the slaves in the household, the servants in the household, um, the, the spouses of other relatives. Sometimes there were siblings in the household and even elderly parents in the household. There were lots of people in this household other than just pair uh, a father and children but they all acknowledged the head of the household as father so that's the kind of father we're talking about not just dad although definitely dad right not just a kind of father that you have a relationship with the way that children have relationships with fathers now but a father who would provide safety, who would provide security, who would provide financially, who would give everything that was needed to a whole group of people so that they could live and so that they could prosper wherever they were. That's what father what looks like biblically. And so we can't ignore the fact that biblically it it means that because even though we want to just cling to our idea of father we're going to miss some important parts of that and mostly i think the thing we miss is how much in this very um short opening we have in the lord's prayer how much jesus is already saying god is the king the ruler the one who is in charge of all of his children. So our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How holy is this king? Because I think if we looked at politics a little bit, a lot of our rulers, we would not consider holy. <laughs> we would not consider them holy in the least. 
and it goes way back, not just to um, those of this day. We were having a conversation, several of us, um, when we were in Europe with some um, some people from Australia, and we were talking about how politics back way back a couple of hundred years ago must have been pretty interesting because we didn't have the internet. We didn't have instant news. And so the things we knew about politicians were quite different. And the expectation that we had of them was quite different. And imagine if they had to be held to a standard of Instagram, to a standard of Facebook, to a standard of having people receive information, sometimes incorrect information too, but receiving information almost instantly about them. It would change drastically. The people who were, um, were part of building our country, for example. If you look back at the lives of some of our founding fathers, there are slave owners. There are people who are unfaithful to their spouses. There are people who are, by the way, most of whom are not Christian, but deists. There are people who are of all different sorts that we would never have chosen if we knew who they were, but without whom we would not now be who we are. So it's an interesting thing. Imagining our God as a holy king, a holy father who, who is in charge of us, but who is hallowed? Because that's sure not how we think of politicians now, is it? But our God is different. Our God is a benevolent ruler. Our God is just and faithful and heavenly and brings that heaven to us. Today, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May God bless the reading of our scripture today, the, the discussion of our prayer today, and fill us with new understanding of this prayer that we hold very special and sacred. Blessings to you all. I hope you are praying the Lord's Prayer all through Lent with us and that as we journey, we learn more not just about this prayer, but about who we are in light of Christ. Praise and glory to God. Amen.